<laughs> You're hired by them to do all this? No. Or? Probably. I can't do that. It's one long video. Best thought up insult ever. I do not touch my camera. Do you touch me? You're going down. What's the video for? Put your mask down. No. Put your mask down. Absolutely not. Put your mask down. No. For jail. Afraid. Yes. Do you know what jail means? Are you serious? <laughs> no. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, they touch him, you were getting sprayed. Really? Can I ask what uh. you guys are doing? His name is Fernando Botero. Mm. Colombian artist who died just about three months ago. Hello guys, we were in the sunny, we were promised rain, but glad it's sunny, La Jolla, here in San Diego County, and we are going to go ahead and uh, make our rounds today. Alright guys, we are at Caboose, fresh juice and sandwich bar here in La Jolla, it's a little bit windy right here, um, I like this little shopping center right here. All right, guys, we're at La Jolla Nail Salon here called Elite Nails. Um, I don't know if I just got waved at or shooed away. She waved at us. All right. Because I, I waved back and she kind of smiled. Uh -huh. um, large sidewalk here. We are in the brick area. And if somebody was so inclined, they could still walk behind us a little bit. Um, and a lot of times we actually move forward. Your name here it looks like some places for release, uh, the brewing company building. Oh, look at that artwork. That's cool. Um, we were at the flower part, the flower pot cafe and bakery here in La Jolla. Um, so this is kind of cool. This place is kind of packed. Uh, we're just taking video of the area. Oh yeah, just travel video. Travel video. Yep. Oh yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. Time lapse stuff together. Okay. Interesting. Cool. Just right. yep. No worries. Thank you. Look at all these tables. They're at a slant. Put your coffee down. Oh. Look how uncomfortable that one table looks right here. The the wooden table with the red umbrella. It's like. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of funny because like, looks like the drinks and stuff could uh, easily roll off. Now that guy has a camera, so hopefully he <laughs> understands what we're doing here. He's serving some food. Looks like some good food. We are at the intersection of Pearl and Fay Avenue. Pearl Street and Fay Avenue, guys, here in La Jolla. You got an ocean view at the end of the street. If you go around here, you start getting into the little hills and mountains. I know uh, some states will not call these mountains that we have out here, um, at least not in San Diego. Just making video. What's that? What's the video for? We're just taking video. I 
know, but why is it just based all on us the whole time? When it's the whole corner and the whole building. In the oh, shop. is it for the business, the restaurant? No, we, we do all the businesses. Okay, so it's not just, it's like for, it's for the, all the businesses. Yeah. Okay. Just feels weird with the face mask and the video on us. And just, He's not wearing a face mask. I know. All right. Hired by them to do all this, no. or the irony in the, his kids filming this while well, get another camera. Back. Good morning, guys. Welcome to the club, man. Uh-huh. Best thought of insult ever. Best thought up insult ever. What was that? Best thought up insult ever. <clears throat> Complaining about filming while filming. That's perfect. This is our rights. Get over it. Uh-huh. I just take video of the areas and then yeah. what happened probably I can't do that it's one long video so we turned off our cameras to go down to another shop a little bit down the way and this guy decided to come back up I know this is huh you can't use people's images touch me you're going down you're in public absolutely can Get your mace ready. You're incorrect. You're in public. You're in public. Get the mace ready. Oh, you have mace? You touch me again. Yeah, where are you guys from? Put your mask down. No. Put your mask down. Absolutely not. Put your mask down. No. It's not going to I have mace. Sir? You touch me, you're you going to jail. Him, you are jail? Afraid. Yes. Do you know what jail means? Good morning, guys. How you doing? Good. Good morning, guys. How you doing? Good morning. How are you? Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, what are you doing? We just take, we take video of the areas. Anybody we interact with, obviously, we take video. Okay. Um, we do travel videos, post them online. We have like nine different channels that we publish it on. <laughs> you guys have a wonderful day. Better Buzz, La Jolla, coffee roasters. They're popping up all over the place. So Richard Walker's Pancake House. Um, hopefully they have the best pancakes in existence. It smells pretty good coming out of there. Trays. Dropping fierce. In La Jolla at the Grand Colonial. We are making a video and I, you know, we're actually scouts for uh, movies and I was looking for a, a look like Tom Cruise, which is right there, especially with the Tom Cruise shades. <laughs> are you serious? No. no. Oh. <laughs> I had you for a second. We just wanted Tom Cruise to say hi to us though. There's a restaurant space here with a patio overlooking the ocean available for $2 million a month. I have no idea, but. Uh, this guy brought me in too. Hold on. All right. So this guy last time invited me in for a tour. Lee Macaroon. And when I got off of uh, doing this, I didn't have...
time to get back here before they closed. So I missed picking up a bunch of macaroons for my wife. And I'm hopefully you can remember to do that today. You gotta remind me. Uh, what's that? So we were here two weeks ago and the owner actually gave us a tour. Um, we do travel videos and we also get reactions that are either good or bad from different businesses and their employees. Sometimes they go really well. Most of the time they go really well. Sometimes they don't. <laughs> and, then we, and then we post it all online and have a lot of fun with it. Yeah, yeah. So last time I was going to come back and get my, uh, my wife some of the macaroons and you guys closed before I got back. I was like, yeah. So I'm going to try to remember today. <laughs> yeah, right? You have a good day. What's that? We just make videos of different stores that we run into and whatever interactions we have. Very good. Yeah. How you doing? What do you post it on? Uh, we have like nine different channels on YouTube that we can put them on. Oh, yep. Okay. Yeah, a lot of fun. So I actually filmed your store like two weeks ago. Um, really? Didn't get to meet anybody, but um, you know, we posted that video up. We got like 40,000 views. So. You kidding yeah. Me? Wow. So, interesting. Yeah. So we have a lot of fun. Two weeks ago? Yeah, about two weeks ago. Where, but, where, where, can, where can I find it? So we're with Impact Media on YouTube. And, Impact Media? Yep. Yep. So oh, we get, yeah, we get the good interactions and we also get the bad interactions and, you know, it all goes course, up. Yeah. Yep. So. Even the bad interactions still is an advertisement for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it definitely gets the views on the video going up, so. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, are you the owner? No, I work here. Okay, my name is Jack. Jack, I'm Sam. Sam? Nice to meet you. Alex, nice to meet you too. So, do you know anything about this horse right here? <laughs> what is the horse supposed to be? The, the big old ankles and... The, the, actually, the designer of the horse is a very famous artist. Yeah? His name is Fernando Botero. Mm. Colombian artist who died just about three months ago. Oh, no. So, the Picasso is a... No, it's a, it's a print? It's a print. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Nothing is original. Okay, yeah. I kind of well, figured, otherwise original, it wouldn't be right there. We have original paintings, but those are local artists. They're not. We do have some like famous yeah, yeah. artists, no, yeah. but those are. They gotta be the customers. They have to know what they are buying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't just take ordinary people and show them a thirty thousand dollar painting. No, absolutely, you know? absolutely. They know what they are buying. Makes sense. Makes yeah, sense. I'll, I'll hey, you have a good day, buddy. Hold on a second. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh. All right. What is he going to do? Uh, uh, oh! Uh, this guy is, uh, he was uh, probably the richest artist ever lived. Wow. He's a, uh, he does all fat. See, you know, everything he does. Oh, the fat ladies. The fat ladies, <laughs> the fat... See, you gotta love them thick women, man. That's what made him popular. Nice. Even hey, it's smart. You find a niche. You know what I mean. Even the monkeys are fat. Nice. <laughs> well, that's cool. You find a niche, though. You know what I mean. Why not? You know, there is one of these horses big in uh, Madrid International Airport. That one, the estimated value is about six million dollars. Dang. There is one in Dubai, one of the scores just recently they just put one. And that one is weighs about fifteen hundred kilo. Because they're hollow. Fifteen hundred kilo is a lot. Over three thousand pounds. Yeah. Um that one the estimated value of twenty three point five million. Woo, that's crazy. So this this guy people love it. Yeah. The ones that they know who Botero is. Nice. Well, you've taught us a lot, so I, would, I thank you for that. That's what we're here for. We're yeah. Here for so I've seen it, like a couple of the paintings in there. I've seen stuff like that. So it's, it's interesting. Ones, yeah, yeah. yeah. See, uh, so it's it, and it's awesome that he found a niche and just ran with it because absolutely. that that I'm sure that helped propel him because it was just different. And you know, obviously in the earlier era of you know what you know that kind of uh, artwork is kind of like it was taboo you know what i mean everybody wanted the marilyn monroe and the you know anything you know you sexier know than marilyn that monroe? yeah i saw that last week you know the original of this how much sold for huh last year in may 
I'm not kidding you. Here, I'll show you. This is, I tell you this much, most expensive American art ever sold. Wow. And it's just a photograph painted over. And who knows, maybe not even Andy Warhol did it. Maybe one of his, the artists that used to work for him, they painted it, and then Andy Warhol just signed it. That's crazy. Yes. I'll be back. Yeah, yeah, no worries. I'm learning stuff. I love learning stuff. Really? You don't have it for a little bit. How are you guys doing? Good morning. Oh, wow. Wow. That's like Jesus. 200 mil almost. Yes. For what it just could possibly be just a replica of. Well, not a replica. No, it was no, painted, but might have been by one of these people. Not actually, actually painted sells. by him. So, possibly not actually painted by him. Possibly. I mean, I'm looking at it because we were talking about this that we did have. He did have, of course, like any famous painter, you would have some workers or students that they work yep. for him. So he did this with multiple versions. Different versions, like different colors. And this one here is the one that sold in auction. Imagine that in auction. So that investor that bought this, what do you think he would keep it? In a museum, where it doesn't cost him a penny, and it's the safest place, two, three years later, put it back in auction for 250 to 300. Walk upstairs. To be rich. <laughs> Yep. You can afford a two hundred million dollar painting. Yep. That is smart. That is very smart, especially the storage of it. <laughs> those those guys know what they're doing. Right? Yeah. We're on this level. Yeah. <laughs> Way up there. Yeah. Smart. Smart. Yeah. Well, it was a pleasure to meet you. Likewise. Thank you for thank thank you for the learnage. Oh, pleasure talking to us. Thank you have you. a wonderful day. You, you guys are always sweet. Thank you. I'll check it out. Again, so it's again? impact with impact media. Yeah, impact media, but it's two videos. it's two eyes with no A. So I I M P C T. Oh I I M P C T. Yep. On YouTube. I'll check it out. Oh it's, it's yeah, we don't mind the negative. There's no, always you guys time. you guys you guys have been wonderful. Oh, so yeah. you, nothing's been I negative I with you guys. Impact. So it's spelled like that. Media. Okay. Yeah. In search, just push the search button. It should pull it up. Yeah. So that's ours. So um, give us a subscribe. But you go to the channel, and if you look through, I think it's a couple weeks old. So if you go through like videos right here, you'll see one from La Jolla. Um, and oh. yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. We get good interactions, bad interactions, but yeah, it's you know. And you're going to be featured on tomorrow's video, so that's good. So tomorrow morning, go ahead and look, and you'll be on the video. It'll be good. Oh, you filming me? Oh, yeah, the whole time. It's great. <laughs> All right, man. Nice to meet you. I hope, I hope we'll be... No, no, video. it's good. We, we mix it up. We don't just focus on bad. We, we get all of it. So. Thank you so much. You have a wonderful day. Thank you for being so kind. Thank you, Pleasure. Thank you for being so kind. Nice meeting you guys. You too. Nice to meet you too. How you doing? Hello. Good morning. What's interesting? We've been waiting for you all day. So <laughs> 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 Oh, <laughs> you! We've been waiting all day. <laughs> hey, there he is again. Hello. I'm just wondering what you're waiting for. I did this once with the Prince Charles. Oh, no, 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 no. Princess Diana. We stood around and waited and waited. So according to them, there's somebody got married. You know that'd be a cool shot to get, but that, you know that's not what we're here for. Um, I, think, I think Princess Diana isn't running. Yeah, that that too. Coming out of here, got a guy in his suit. Yeah, <laughs> there'd be all kinds of things coming here. Um, but no, we um, so we do 
travel videos. Oh. And we stay in front of each location for about five, 10 minutes, get people coming in and out. We usually uh, time lapse it. And then anyone who talks with us, we, yeah, we, anyone who talks to us, we kind of film those interactions. Nice. Um, this restaurant's always been really positive for us. So we like coming here. And uh, last time we took a tour inside and it was really beautiful in there. So, um, but yeah, we're not, you know, we're just here in existence, just like you. Yeah, well, we're here for five nights. And honestly, I'd rather talk to people like you anyways. Everyone else is pretentious. <laughs> yeah. How you doing, buddy? Good. For you! <laughs> We're waiting for you, sir. There's happiness going on over there. You touch me, you're going to jail. Jail? Yes. Touch him, you are getting sprayed. Really? Yes, really. Wow. You are amazing. Let, let, let me have do not touch my camera. I do not touch my camera, but you touch my camera every day. Oh my what lord. <laughs> You're an idiot, bro. I'm glad this is going where it's going. Okay, little man. They called the police, apparently. While we were dealing with these two lunatics, the waiter who had been helping serve all the customers actually jumped in and defended them and was also going after us verbally, but we were ignoring him to deal with these crazy people. My adrenaline is going, my fucking camera is shaking, I'm about, yeah, mine too, a little bit. I'm about to lay down some old dude. Oh really? Are you, I'm gonna get sprayed? Yes. <laughs> hey, you're doing your first amendment right, good job. Learn it, study it, practice it. All right, guys, we have finished up here today. I wanted to remind people that um, pushing the limits of our rights is very important and vital to maintaining and protecting our rights in our free society. A lot of people might disagree with, um, you know, our expression of rights when it might invade or feel like an invasion on someone's space or privacy out in public. And, you know, regardless of your feelings on the matter, by pushing the limits of what we are allowed to do, we create opportunities for progress and change. You know, every police interaction, all the education, the opportunity for conversations to be had with the employees and the owners of these establishments. It is very important. This allows us to address issues such as discrimination, inequality, or injustice that may otherwise go unnoticed or unaddressed. You know, education of the police departments and how they respond to situations like this is vital to ensure that people aren't put in jail or arrested on charges that should have never, you know, been trumped up in the first place. It's important to understand the magnitude of false accusations and how often that they occur. At least once a week had a woman and in these situations, it's been proven on the camera, it's mostly women. Had they had their way, I'd be in cuffs and on my way to uh, jail from anything from assault to stalking to whatever they want to claim when the cops arrive or to their boyfriends. You know, it, it, it's a dangerous situation. There's a lot of uh, auditor uh, trolls um, that want to maintain this. Oh, they're taking it too far. They're doing too much. There's better ways. There really isn't. We've done it. And doing the other ways that they would like us to do We've actually lost a lot of our freedoms in the process. And the challenge is maintaining our freedoms and keeping them without 
hindrance. Pushing the limits of our rights can also lead to the expansion of our freedoms. And that is important because this country is founded on free, being free, having freedoms, expression, challenges to the government, challenges of authority, and maintaining a status quo that, hey, you know, if you are in a authoritative position, you work for the people, you work for us. You should not be stepping on or trampling on our rights. You shouldn't be walking all over them. And that's exactly what happens in a lot of cases, especially in minority communities where, you know, the education they receive on our rights is not as vast as one that I might have received. And there's a lot of people in jail and prison because they didn't know their rights. And it's important that they do, you know, when you are being talked to by a police officer, no matter what you're being accused of, whether or not you did it, you have the right to remain silent and you should always use that right. Let an attorney help advocate for you. As soon as you talk to the police, whether you've done it or not, the second you talk to the police, you have given a weapon to the department to bury you under the prison. Pushing the limits of our rights, like the sidewalk audits that we do, going into post offices. Again, these audit trolls that like to say that, oh, they're doing too much, they're frauditors, you know, they, they, they like to claim this, and that's fine. I respect the fact that that can keep some people in check. But when you have these people intentionally trying to, oh, this person needs to get arrested. Let's send in all this information to the prosecutor. It makes you no more than a, you know, a Karen yourself. And, you know, to want to punish somebody for nothing that affects you is going well and above and beyond any moral standing that you would have had to, you know, to say that you're right and they're wrong. You know, you sending information to oh prosecutors this guy needs to go to jail he's got to pay for this pay for what what did he do that was wrong other than stand up for your rights and maybe push the limits and yes they might be doing it for social media club but they are still doing it people are still being educated even if the education is being done in a brash harsh pushing the limits of our rights can serve as a check on the power of government or institutions it ensures that they do not overstep their authority and that they do not infringe upon our fundamental rights by testing the boundaries. We can hold those powers accountable and ensure our rights are always protected. This is a constant fluid check that has to occur. This isn't let's do it once or twice and then forget about it. This has to be constant, always keeping in check the people that have authority over us. A person that has the ability to take away our freedoms should not be unaware of the rights that we have as a people. While pushing the limits of our rights might elicit negative reactions for some individuals or groups, it is important to remember that the progress that comes with resistance is effectively the protection of every person within this country. Otherwise, what's the point? You know, why do we want to live in a free society if we are uncomfortable with the freedoms that we are given? It is through these reactions that we can engage in dialogue. And I have proven that time and time again through my audits that I have done in the last three weeks. We challenge existing beliefs that these people have that don't know that we are allowed to do what we are allowed to do. They do not understand. And that is the purpose of educating them. And some people can't be educated in the normal way. We don't all learn the same way. Some of it has to be through shock and awe. We have to stand up as a people and understand that we have to put each other in check at times. And that means eliciting what might be a poor response from people. Very important. Everybody could throw around the words frauditor. It's a term that's getting way overused to anybody that is actively doing this. And that's fine. Continue to keep us in check. Absolutely. But find a way to do that that isn't trying to take away rights and freedoms while trying to complain about how we are reminding people of our rights and freedoms. The very rights and freedoms I have and I am out here practicing, I am doing for you as well. This isn't just for me. This is to ensure that my kids continue to live in a free America. The discomfort that is generated often by us out here pushing the limits can serve as the kind of bouncing board for growth and change and to remind people of their rights as well. 
it is very important that every American citizen understands our rights. And it is more important that every person that has chosen to become a civil servant has chosen to put a badge on their chest that they completely understand the oath that they are swearing to. The fact that so many officers and sheriff's deputies and people in power stand in a group and swear to an oath that they then do not either know or refuse to protect is crazy to me. It's asinine. That proves that those oaths should not be done in a group of officers anymore. Absolutely not. They should be done on a one-on-one -on -one basis with the officer repeating each section of our Bill of Rights under the Constitution. People don't know what the Constitution is versus what the Bill of Rights is. The fact that I've had cops not know that is insanity. They are affirming upon becoming a police officer or a sheriff's deputy that they're going to stand for my rights, but they don't know them. That should scare every one of you if you believe what we're doing or not. If you want to call us frauditors or not, it should scare the shit out of you. Pushing the limits of our rights is vital for the maintenance and preservation of all of our rights and freedoms. It allows us to address societal issues, expand our freedoms, because we shouldn't be limited to the ones that were just promised to us hundreds of years ago. We should expand on them. We are a free people. We were born in a great, amazing country. We are slowly becoming accepting of having our rights shipped away from one side to the next, to the next, to the next. The fact that some people can get arrested for going into a government building and challenging our authority just guaranteed to us under the constitution. And this is happening because of these federal laws. Oh, this person happens to fall, you know, accidentally trip into this gray area. And then they're going to prison for it, for what? Because they challenged our government in a way that you don't like or makes you uncomfortable. Conducting ourselves in this way that you see in all of my videos allows us to address all of these issues and concerns not just with the civil servants going out and reminding people of their rights forcing conversations to be had when we leave a spot after a confrontation you don't think conversations happening i guarantee it is they're googling things they're looking things up they're having family members challenge them based on their experience absolutely that means I am doing my job. It is through these processes, whether you like them or not, progress is made and a more inclusive society can be achieved. And that is extremely, extremely important. The naysayers that insist on saying, oh, you guys are frauditors, you guys are, you know, you don't need to go pick on people like that. You're bullying and harassing people. Absolutely not. You could not be further from the truth. The fact that you guys are not as scared as I am, that's what's scary. It is insane that that is not scaring the bejesus out of you guys.